Hello folks, my name is Nitin Pradhan and I'm the co-founder of Career Trajectory, a program by ScaleUp USA. ScaleUp USA is a digital business and career growth accelerator based in Washington DC in US. And today we are going to talk about a very interesting topic and the topic is MIT Admission Workshop. So we're going to talk about how do you get admission and financial aid in Massachusetts Institute of Technology, which is a premier, premier university uh, institute in US. So let's get started. So the agenda, as I said, is three phased. Uh, first, how do you secure admission in MIT? Second, how do you secure financial aid in MIT? And third, how do you really find affordable resources for college prep to actually go out and do this uh, which is actually get admission and financial aid in universities like MIT. And before I get any further, I want to tell you one thing. Getting admission and financial aid in top U.S. universities and colleges is really having a winning process. And what we are going to discuss today is the winning process. So pay special attention to the process. Make sure that you follow it. Make sure that you use the resources that we are giving because the competition around the world is very, very high. So it's really a three-phase process that I'm going to talk about here. First, you need to have a knowledge. You need to have knowledge what it takes to win admission and financial aid in top-tier universities and colleges like MIT. Okay. If you don't have that knowledge, you will not be able to go anywhere. The second, you need to have the data. You need to have the data so that you can compare yourself with competition, especially if you have the data about who got in last year and you can compare with themselves, you know, compare yourself with them, then you know precisely how good or bad you are and how much improvement you need. So you need this data. This data is not easily available, folks. So I'm going to tell you where this data is available. And third, you need process. You need process to actually develop a winning applicant, which is you, and then build a winning application, which is your application. So these are the three things that you're going to need. All of them are process driven. So make sure that you understand and make sure that you use the information that we are talking. Now, before I get any further, I want to mention three valuable resources. Make a note of it, join and subscribe and register to these because this is going to help you change your future. First is, you know, YouTube channel. Make sure that you join the Scale Up USA YouTube channel. We are going to show it to you shortly. Make sure that you join our Facebook club. Uh, you know, the Facebook club has a lot of resources, mainly articles that we put out around admission and financial aid in US. So make sure you join the Facebook club. And then our premier, premier resource, which is the Scale Up USA Accelerator. That is a program called Career Trajectory. I'm going to reference to it. So make sure that you are actually joined in on all of these programs and resources. Now, before I get any further, the first thing I want to mention is don't make these 10 common mistakes. These are the 10 common mistakes that students and parents are making, not only in US, but around the world. We have many, many students take our program every day, and a lot of them seem to be making these 10 mistakes. And that is why we have created, you know, a series of videos around them. I'm not going to discuss them here, but I'm going to point you to where these resources are. Make sure that you take this because if you start making these 10 mistakes, then you're already behind everyone else. You don't want to be. You want to be on the cutting edge. And so don't make this mistake. So I'm going to just show you where this information is. So if you go to scaleupusa.xyz, you know, that's the website. And if you go to career trajectory on top, uh, you know, if you just click on career trajectory, you're going to come to this career trajectory program. This is the program that I'm going to refer to because it has lots and lots of resources. And these resources can be used in US or internationally. And you can actually register either for the premium program or the free program. Either way, you will get access to the 10 mistakes because they are so important. And I'm going to show, show you where in the curriculum they are. So this is the entire career trajectory curriculum. It's the most comprehensive curriculum if you want to get into US. It's self-paced, so you can actually just sit in your house, get a nice, great, strong internet connection and start using and reading this video, see them as you need and get on step by step. But this is the section that I would suggest you need to absolutely look at. These are the top 10 mistakes. We are talking about a number of resources here. They are absolutely free. So make sure that you go to section number one, 
the foundational section and make sure that you look at the top 10 mistakes and make sure you don't make those mistakes. Now, the next thing I want to sort of talk about is the Massachusetts Institute of Technology itself. So as you might have heard, it's one of the top tier universities in, uh, you know, in the US. Okay, so I want you to sort of understand uh, the size and shape and scope of this particular institute, uh, you know, and I've got some very important figures that you need to understand. So first, the total expenses for, you know, this year is expected to be about $70,000 if you're staying on campus, you know, $70,000. That's yearly expense. That's a very high number, folks. So a lot of people get just very uh, afraid and scared about this large number and say, hey, I don't have $70,000 per year into four years. I don't have that kind of money. Don't worry. Look at the net price. Net price is what an average student seems to be paying in Massachusetts Institute of Technology. And that's roughly somewhere between 18 and 19,000. That's what an average student is paying. Why are they paying so much lower than the 70,000? Because the institute is providing them some kind of financial aid and assistance, which is bringing down the cost of the program. So make sure that you understand that and then sort of figure out whether you can pay that amount. And, and we'll talk a lot about uh, financial aid a little later. The third thing I want to mention is this average loan amount. That's the average loan amount that students seem to have at the end of the four years, okay? $20,000 is not a lot of loan in the end of four years if you're completing your graduation degree, especially from MIT, because you're gonna get a wonderful, wonderful job and you're gonna be just fine, okay? So that's another part that you need to understand. You might have to take a small loan, but the average loan amount seems to be $20,000. Now, here are some other numbers. Number of applicants uh, last year were about 21,700. About 7% of them were admitted, very low number. Of those admitted, of the 7% admitted, 76% actually enrolled. What does, that, what does that tell you? That tells you that this is a highly coverted kind of uh, institute, very low admission rates, and very high enrollment rates, okay? It's ranked number three in US News and World Report's ranking, very high up there. So in US, there are roughly between 4,000 and 4,500 universities. This is ranked number three in US, very, very high. And then the next thing I want to mention is this ROI number. ROI is return on investment. And Payscale comes up with this uh, number and they have this 20 year ROI, net ROI number. I don't want to get into the definition because it's a little complicated. We don't have enough time to do that. But what I want to tell you is the ROI number is very, very high, $1,015,000. Typical universities will have a ROI number somewhere between 200,000 and 500, 600,000. So the fact that it has million dollar plus shows that it's a terrific return on investment of your time, your effort, your money, all of it. And then the graduation rates are about 92%. You want to make sure that the graduation rates are high. That shows that if you get into the college or university, you are going to graduate uh, because the graduation rates are so high. So what we are saying here is MIT is a great, great place. Now the question is, how do you get into MIT? And here is where all the things that I talked earlier, the knowledge, the data, the process comes into play. So if you want to get into MIT or any other top tier US university, you need to look at what your academic and non-academic profile is. Here's the one thing in the middle that I have here, you know, this academic and non-academic profile. Now, you need to know what your academic and non-academic profile is, and then you need to compare it with MIT's student admission criteria and MIT's uh, financial aid criteria. So there are really two criteria there. What is what is MIT requiring for financial aid? What's MIT requiring for admission? And they're going to compare what your admission and non, your academic and non-academic profile is with their admission criteria. And if your academic and non-academic profile exceeds the requirement that MIT is seeking, then folks, you have a very high chance of getting in. If your academic and non-academic profile is less than what the university is seeking, <clears throat> then you're probably not going to get in. So you must be wondering, what the heck is my academic and non-academic profile? How do I even find it? 
Okay, so we are going to talk about this. Now, remember, folks, this kind of information is not available easily on the Internet. So make sure to jot down this and make sure to go back to career trajectory and look at this because this is a data driven approach. We are not just talking some fluff here. That's not what we do on career trajectory. We talk in depth. Then, OK, so let me try and explain you what an academic and non academic profile is. So all, univers all universities in US, U.S. have typically come out and actually agreed to some academic criteria and some non-academic criteria and the importance they give in their admission and financial aid. Okay, So in the academic area, here are all the criteria that they have. In the non-academic area, here are all the criteria that they have. You can actually read through them. I'm not going to read through them, but you have them here. And then finally, here is the importance they can give to each of these criteria. So for example, academic GPA could be very important to the university, could be just important, could be considered, or maybe it's not even considered, okay? So you need to understand for each university, what is their academic criteria, what is their non-academic criteria, and then you need to compare it with where you stand, okay? And so if there's a match where your academic and non-academic criteria matches perfectly with you know, what the university is seeking, then you have a great chance. So for example, let's say you have a lot of work experience, okay? Let's say you have a lot of work experience and you start applying to universities which are not even considering work experience. So they have already clearly listed that they don't care about work experience. It's not considered. Then your work experience is completely going to get wasted. It's completely going to get wasted. Let me give you one more example. Let's say you have a great standardization test score, okay? You have a great standardization test score, but you start applying to universities where standardization test score is probably just considered but not very important. Then you're wasting away your great standardization test score. So you need to really make sure first where you stand and then which universities actually need what you have, okay? So now let's look at what MIT is really requiring it. Okay, so MIT has told us what they need. And where does MIT tell you this? MIT tells the US federal government what is important to them. They give a bunch of data to the US federal government. That's the most authentic, most updated data. I'm going to show you where that data is on career trajectory so you can actually use it. But here's what MIT is looking at. On the academic criteria side, you know, they don't really seem to be caring a lot about uh, class rank. They just say considered rest of the things are very, very important. Now on the non-academic criteria, if you actually look at it, look at this particular area, character and personal characteristics, yeah, personal qualities. MIT considers them very important. So if you are actually good here or great here, somehow, you know, you have done this, then you are going to be in great shape. Now these three are really important, I can tell you. Extracurricular activity, talent and ability, and character and personal qualities. I can just tell you from our experience. If you're going to top tier university in US, uh, most people applying will have a great academic criteria. Most people will have this. What they may not have is some of this non-academic criteria. So if you have some of this really, really well, you're going to have a combination that's going to be unbeatable. So that's what you need to do. So I'm going to show you a resource of how do you start really building your extracurricular activity, talent, ability, and character and personal qualities, because this seems to be making a lot of difference in a lot of universities. So let me again go to career trajectory. And if you go to career trajectory, there's a section here, uh, I'll show you, uh, I think it's the section number seven, which is talking, talking about building a strong personal brand. This is discussing in detail how do you really go about and actually, you know, go out and do this extracurricular activity, talent and ability and character and personal qualities. Make sure to look at that because that's going to tell you step by step how you go about doing this. Now, one thing that I want to tell you, if you want to improve your academic and non-academic criteria, this is not something, folks, that you can do it in seven days or 10 days or one month. The earlier you start, the better it is. Uh, typically, we suggest you start around your ninth grade. So you have ample time to really improve and impress. That's what we would suggest. Uh, and if you go and take those top 10 mistakes, you will hear a lot about some of these areas. Now, as I mentioned, you know, so 
now you know sort of what MIT is looking for. You know, you know what academically they are looking for. You know what they are looking at non-academically. You sort of know where you stand, but I think you still need precise data. For example, if you think you're doing well in your standardization test course, you want to know what is really well, you know, what is the threshold that MIT has, you know, or what are the annual expenses or what kind of financial aid is being given or who is it being given and what number is it being given. All these kind of very detailed activities are not easily findable on the internet, okay? And so I'm going to show you a resource which is going to allow you to do this. Make sure that you actually go and access this resource and start looking at this resource. Now, here's the resource where it is. So if you go to, you know, career trajectory, there is a section, section number 10, uh, which is comprehensive application and admission data, okay? In this particular section, you will see MIT here. So if you register, this is part of the premium program, so you'll have to go out and register on the premium programs, folks. But if you register on this and you actually go out and look at the MIT Institute of, uh, you know, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, you will find the data that you need. Now, what is the data that's going to, you are going to get once you get here? This is the data that you're going to get here. So, uh, you know, this is the data that we have put. This is coming from MIT and going directly to the US federal government and other major publishers around the world. This is about, you know, uh, roughly, uh, you know, 40 pages worth of data. And this is the most updated data that they have for last year. Here you will be able to find out almost every detail that you need. You know who is applying, you know, uh, you know how many types of people in what categories are applying. You can see what kind of grants are being given. You can figure out what loans have been taken. You can figure out who gets admitted, who joins, how many people go on wait list. You can figure out what kind of admission criteria they have. You can figure out all kinds of other data around, uh, you know, entering class, uh, transfer students, everything is there, folks. You need this particular data. And so make sure that you go, you know, to career trajectory and actually access this data for uh, MIT. Now, of course, you might want to apply to other universities. You're going to need the same data, folks. And if that data is not available here, uh, just let us know once you register on to the premium program what universities you're trying to get into and we'll try to research that data and put it in there. Now I want to tell you not all universities are putting out all this data. Sometimes the data is not accurate so we may not be able to always help you but by and large we can do that. We have started doing that from California uh, you know because a lot of uh, applicants from us are going and applying into California. So that's why we started with California, but we will put in other data too. Okay. Now, one more thing I want to mention there when you're going out and doing this. So now we have discussed a couple of things. We have discussed what knowledge you need so that you can compare yourself with others. We have showed you what kind of data you need and where this data is. It's very, very important. Now, last I'm going to sort of talk about two things. How do you take this data and actually do advanced analysis? You know, How do you do uh, analysis on these 40 pages of data? And we have a separate video on that. I'm not going to get into it here because this video will become too long. But we have a case study on Stanford, uh, which I think you should look at. And if you go to YouTube, you know, if you just go to YouTube and search for Scale Up USA Stanford, if you just search for it, I think you should be able to get it. Here it is. Uh, this is the whole section that is there. The Stanford University Admission and Financial Aid Workshop. This is a great, great workshop that we did. We just put it out on, uh, you know, YouTube. So make sure that you can access it and understand how to use this data. Very valuable. Okay. So that's the other thing that I would sort of mention. Now, finally, what I also want to do is to make sure that you understand that process is very important, okay? And the process is going to help you do two things. It's going to help you become a winning applicant, you yourself. And then it's going to allow you to actually create a winning application. There are two different things, guys. First, you need to become a winning applicant and then your application needs to be great. If you actually do these things, you're going to get into great colleges and universities. And we have a full process here, okay? This process takes time, so don't start this seven days before. Start immediately. If you have seen this now, start immediately because that is going to make the difference between where you're going to go and what kind of admission and financial aid you're going to get. 
And so the entire process is in this curriculum, okay? There are 10 chapters, I believe, here. Uh, you know, there are like 13 chapters, I'm sorry. They go step by step by step. Go back and look at this curriculum. Go back and take, you know, the 10 steps and then join the whole program because that is going to help you actually get in, uh, you know, to colleges and universities like MIT. So with that, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually uh, close this session. Hope you liked it. If you liked it, make sure that you subscribe to our channel, like it, share it, uh, and make sure that you actually join the career trajectory program because what we are doing here in this program is just showing you an outline of how you go about doing stuff. That program is going step by step, actually doing it and showing you and giving you the data. So together you will do well. Okay. Thank you and wish you all the best.